Yes, you guys, how you all doing? I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys a predicted lineup 11 and preview for our upcoming game tomorrow against Sheffield United. 5.30 p.m. away from home. So it's going to be a very big game, a very important game, and that's because Sheffield United's form is now slowly starting to pick up. Sheffield United have been a breath of fresh air this season. I actually predicted that they'd be quite good, and that was due to the very special way in which they break teams down and overload the wide areas. Now, we know Sheffield United like to use a back three system, but the only difference is is how they use their wide centre backs to create those overloads out wide and create that dominance in those areas. It's worked out so well for them man. The reason why I predicted they'd do well is because most teams in this country prefer to attack down wide. So in that sense, Sheffield United constantly had an extra man available and with how they attack, defend and break teams down and that team spirit they have as well, they've become a very difficult team to play against this season. Due to injury concerns in midfield, could Lampard be forced to use a different formation to accommodate for a loss of midfielders? Who knows? Wait to hear my thoughts and opinions. And before I get into things, you guys, let me get the plugs out of the way. Number one, if you liked today's video, smash that like button. I want to get over 2,000 likes for today's video. For the second plug, do not forget yesterday was the official release of our new home season kit. If you guys use my affiliate links below in the description, you get access to my 10% off discount code, which is NINI10. So what are you guys waiting for? I'm here to hook you guys up. And one more thing before we start today's video, hear my thoughts and opinions from the video sponsor today. Fam, Arsenal ain't making top four in the next five years unless they get sent to like the Scottish League, blood, and they're battling out with Chelsea, fam. That's how I feel, innit? You know them way there. <laughs> Now, before I continue on, my good friends at AA Sport asked me to weigh in and give my thoughts and opinions on who's worse off, Arsenal or Spurs? It seems like things are only getting worse for our London rivals. Arsenal are far off the UCL spot and it seems like Spurs are now regressing again <laughs> under Jose Mourinho. It seems like we are currently the best club in London and it's looking like it's going to be that way for the foreseeable future. We are running the right way, we have a top excellent academy, we play better football and we have a great transfer policy and we have better relationships between our board members and club staff as well. These are the necessary ingredients that you need for success and it seems like Arsenal and Spurs are very far away from that. Right now, both clubs can't even invest heavily to improve on their situations for next season. We are currently having what's looking to be potentially our best ever transfer window. Right now, there really are levels of this game, you guys, and to hear more thoughts and opinions to interact with me too, I am going to link you the full video up above in the card and in the description below. Get involved in the conversation, give your thoughts and opinions in that video's comment section. And without wasting any more time, we get straight back in to the predicted lineup. We now start with the press conference and team news, and Lampard confirmed that Billy Gormor recently just had his operation yesterday and he's going to be out for up to three to four months. Now, this is quite unfortunate, and to be honest, it does make me rate Gilmore's performance against Palace even higher because he was physically outmatched in the field. They were very rough. They were going in for hard tackles, and the beautiful thing was Billy was not faced by that, and he kept playing his game. Unfortunately, due to that physical game, he's picked up an injury that's going to keep him out for three to four months. So it's sad in that sense, but it seems like once the new season does restart, he should be back and running again. So Lampard confirmed that Kante is going to be out for tomorrow's game, and he mentioned his injury concerns throughout the season. Now he's picked up 15 injuries, so many hamstrings, and I actually broke them down in a big video I did on Kante and whether we should keep him or sell him once the season ends. It seems like this is something that Lampard is one day going to have to tackle and I guess that he can help himself out by signing a backup player for that position to help alleviate the amount of games that Kansai would have to play. Lampard then spoke about Sheffield United's manager Chris Wilder and how much praise he had for him, speaking about his career progression from a League One manager to now becoming a Premier League manager. So Wilder's been an absolute breath of fresh air. He's been so good this season and he definitely has a shout to be named manager of the season once the season ends. And when it comes to team news, Lampard confirmed that obviously Kante is not fit, 
Kovacic is fit, so it's going to be interesting to see whether he starts tomorrow or maybe he has some involvement in the game as it goes on. And Lampard remain coy on whether Jorginho may start in tomorrow's game. Now, the big news that was announced before the press conference is that young Lewis Bate is going to be joining the match day squad for the game against Sheffield United. Lewis Bate is a technically accomplished midfield player that has very good cross control, very good dribbling ability. He can play between the lines. He can beat the opposition press too. He has great talent and it would be very exciting to see him get some minutes in that game against United. But anyway, you guys, we now move on to the predicted lineup part for today's video. Starting with the striker and I have Tammy Abraham playing up front. Now, yes, he scored recently against Crystal Palace, getting that third and decisive goal. But for me, I think there's big tactical merits and reasons as to why Tammy should start against Sheffield United. Now, it's not even about Tammy scoring against Sheffield United last time. It's more about how he plays and the benefits we can get from using him up front. Tammy's ability to run the channels, running behind two and stretch defences is key against a Sheffield United team that has their wide centre-backs pushing forwards to create those overloads. So if you can force them back, you can limit how often Sheffield United do attack. And for me, Tammy Abraham is going to be very key and useful in this game tomorrow. We now move on to the right-hand side and I have William obviously playing in this area. Now, at this point in time, it's almost guaranteed that William is definitely either scoring or getting an assist in tomorrow's game. His involvement for the team since the restart and this entire season has been absolutely unreal. He's been so good for us. He's been so consistent. He's been that perfect team player you need. And William has definitely been profiting from playing with more freedom and playing in a more attacking system compared to other managers. We now move on to the left-hand side and I have Christian Pulisic obviously starting in the game tomorrow. Now, I must have seen his goal against Crystal Palace like a thousand times. It was so nice. It was so elegant. It was so pleasing on the eye. The excellent shooting technique from that area, but he was forced to make a very difficult shot. It shows you just how far Christian's developed and come along. He's one of our most important players right now. And most importantly, he plays like he's one of the most important players. So Christian's mentioned in previous interviews throughout the season that when he signed for us, he felt like a bit of an underdog in that sense. But... He's clearly a guy that has that mentality and that self-belief to know that, yes, I'm good enough and my qualities are definitely going to shine if I keep my head down and keep working. So it's been beautiful to see and I personally feel like he will score in tomorrow's game. We now move on to the midfield three and I have Ross Barkley playing down that right hand side. Now, from a tactical point of view, Barkley has been good. You know, at times I feel like maybe his creativity isn't really there, but under further inspection, Barkley plays a more attacking role compared to a Mason Mount. Barkley's tasked more with entering inside the box too. That's why we see him make those runs in behind the striker regularly. That's why we see him playing closer up front with the striker too. Lampard knows that Barkley isn't the best when it comes to the build-up phase or when it comes to splitting teams open too. So this is the best way to use him. And I feel that Barkley has been good and solid for this team. Obviously, alongside Barkley is going to be Mason Mount, who's really stepped up even more ever since he's been given his best position. It's quite obvious that Mason Mount is a number eight, and now we're seeing his expression, his confidence. He's looking saucy on the ball. He's playing those important passes between the lines, keeping the moves going, finding attacks, creating them. And just like William, Mount plays a crucial part in every single goal we score. His goal involvements have been so important for us, and tomorrow, we're going to need his abilities even more. And now to complete this midfield three, out of Lewis Bate, Jorginho and Kovacic, who is going to start? I'm going for Kovacic. Now, the main reason for this is that number one, in the case of Lewis Bate, I feel like maybe this might be a step too soon. Not that he doesn't have the abilities, but due to the importance of the game tomorrow, we have to win to keep that momentum going and to keep that points gaps distance, we need to win. So I think that Lewis Bate, if he's lucky, Let's say for winning like three or four nil with like 20 minutes spare, then yes, he may get an opportunity. I think Kovacic might start with Jorginho ending the game, similar to his involvement against Crystal Palace. And the reason for that is that if we're winning, Jorginho's ability to just control the tempo of the game is going to be very useful against a Sheffield United team that's still going to put more men forward and continue to attack. So I think in that sense, this is how you really use the midfield at your disposal. And for me, it is going to be interesting to see how Kovacic does perform playing as a lone pivot player 
in that position. So we now move on to the back four, starting down the left hand side, and I have Aspi Loquesa playing in this area. Now, Aspi has low key been one of our best creative players since the restart. He's been getting assists for days, and I feel like Aspi understands his limits and he's finding like really unique ways to maximize what he can do and from this we're seeing much more clinical efficiency with how he uses the ball in the final third now down that left hand side he's regularly playing a lot of very good cutback passes and down the right hand side i feel like his crosses have a bit more variety behind them so it's not a surprise why his form has been good and why he's been keeping his place in the team I have him starting as our left back. And to move on to our centre back partners, obviously, that's going to be Kurt Zuma and Christensen. We do know that when a team wins, Lampard isn't really planning on making any unnecessary changes to his defence. I was really impressed to see Zuma and Christensen playing together and looking good for the first time this season. And I'm really hoping to see that relationship blossom in the game tomorrow because I still believe that these two could be a phenomenal partnership if they can just work on a few minor quirks and differences. They have that potential. They both threw the game well, very fast, decent in the air too. I mean, you could like combine their qualities together and they can move the ball as well. They're still quite young at 24 and 25. So by the time they're like 26, 27, they could be even better players. As to complete the back four, I have Reese James playing down the right hand side. Now, Reese and the fullbacks are going to be key. Sheffield United are a team that likes to create those overloads in the wide areas. So we need to have quality in these areas to help fight them off. With Reese, he has excellent crossing, he has excellent distribution, and he's been proven to be pretty strong defensively too. Now, I do feel like his recent criticisms about not playing as well and struggling uh, is not as accurate and it's not as fair. The main reason for why he looks worse than what he actually is is because teams are now trying to stop us playing down the right hand side. This happens in football time and time again. And even though things aren't as easy for Reese, I don't necessarily feel like he's been struggling and out of his depth. I feel like he's competed against these challenges. We've seen some great defending. He's won countless tackles too. And I feel like due to maybe one or two mistakes he makes in the game, that is clouding people's judgment about his overall game and overall quality. So for me, he completes that back four. As to end things, I have Kepa in goal. And you know what? His game against Palace was great. Great. He made that phenomenal world-class save to obviously prevent that third equaliser and um, this is the type of quality that Kepa can provide. You know, he does have great acrobatic abilities but to be a goalkeeper, it's not just about those moments. You need more and it's time for Kepa to start showing Lampard and the team that he's ready to be our number one. And there you have it, you guys. That's my team for the game tomorrow. From the sub bench, we do have options. So if the game isn't going in our favour, we have hudson Adoy, Loftus-Cheek, Giroud and other players to turn to to change the game in our favour. So I feel like tomorrow we are going to get the win. It's not going to be an easy game against the Sheffield United team. There's going to be periods where they're going to dominate the ball at times. But I think overall, our quality is going to shine. Our options from the bench is going to shine. And for tomorrow's game, I'm going to go for a 3-1 win. So on that point, you guys, I'm going to wrap things up and keep things moving. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. I'm in the FC. This is Reliance CV. I'll see you guys later with some more videos.